Hello in this video we are going to discuss all about theories, rationale, and evidence supporting mother tongue based multilingual educatio development learning theories, the schema theory of learning. Mother tongue based multilingual education has its learning theories that help learners understand their personal learning history and assist teachers in developing appropriate community based learning activities. These learning theories are, the development learning theory by Jean Piaget. A Swiss scientist noticed that children learn by passing through a consistent series of stages in cognitive development. The Schema Theory by R.C. Anderson, a respected educational psychologist organized knowledge as an elaborate network of abstract mental structures which represent one's understanding of the world. Sociocultural Learning Theory by Lev Vygotsky, a Russian paleontologist states that everything is learned twice, first socially then critically, all knowledge is socially constructed that is, all learning is grouping learning, United Nations support mother tongue instructions as a means of improving educational quality by building upon the knowledge and experience of the learners and teachers, Two is that UNESCO supports bilingual and multilingual education at all levels of education as a means of promoting both social and gender equality and as a key element on linguistically diverse society. UNESCO supports language as an essential component of intercultural education in order to encourage understanding between different population groups and ensure respect of fundamental rights. It also develops appropriate cognitive and reasoning skills enabling children to operate equally in different languages starting in mother tongue with transition to Filipino the English and to preserve the Philippine culture treasure as well. Provides learners with a strong educational foundation in terms of first language in terms of instruction. It's a stepping stone in achieving the aims of education as well as the goal of functional literacy. A child to express himself or herself easily, as there is no fear of making mistake, multilingual education encourage active participation by learning and learning process because they understand what is being discussed and what is being asked to them. Successful bridging to one or more additional languages, enabling the use of both, or all, languages for lifelong learning. And now, the research shows that children whose early education is in the language of their home tend to do better in the later years of their education. And now we're going to discuss about the schema theory on learning, that one of the learning theories supporting mother tongue based multilingual education, what comes to your mind when you heard schema? And schema theory? What is schema theory? What does it mean? Is it important in community-based learning activities? Sir Frederick Bartlett was the first professor of experimental psychologist at Cambridge University.
University, the UK who is the pioneer of cognitive psychology which today forms the foundation of all cognitive science. It was whilst in this position that Bartlett published the book, Remembering, his most respected work in theory and education. Bartlett Anderson is a rare deprivational psychologist who is in the 1970s used schema theory and educational setting, predominantly from a reading perspective. Anderson discusses the relevance of bottom-up versus top-down processing. First is bottom-up, represent the words of the page you are reading from bottom-up processing refers to the influence exerted on your mind by the words on the page. Example, imagine I give you a page on the text based on a subject you had no experience with. As able readers you give them the words, right? This is bottom-up processing. stumble upon a helicopter manual written in a language you have no experience with the letters, words and sentence structure it all appear alien to you. Despite being an expert pilot, you can't do anything with the manual. Top-down processing, like bottom-up processing only work when accompanied If a child in your class can't relate the new topic you are teaching them with any of their pre-existing schemata, they will simply not be able to learn it. And now, here are the principles according to Rosenshine, that very much useful in developing schema, in new topic on learning process, we use this framework as a mental structure of not only of what we have learned, but what we have available to us to learn, and where we can place it, our existing schema influences our perception of new materials, moreover, in order to guide a teacher on how to develop the schema of their students or pupils, here's the second principle, its new material must be presented Therefore, using small steps understanding and we the see the development of schema as a depiction of cognitive, cognitive architecture helps a teacher understand these conceptions may arise, and also how to combat them. Schema should always to consider in the learning setting for appropriate community-based learning activities.